Welcome to another Photoshop editing tutorial. In this video we will be creating some epic sunrise colors. As always, if you want to follow along this tutorial, check the description of the video to download the raw file. And now, without much more talking, let's jump into it. As always, the very first thing I'm doing is the basic raw adjustments in the camera raw editor. As you can see, the raw file is already looking pretty good, but it isn't really doing the colors justice at the moment. So we want to change that. First off, let's head into the profile menu and change it to Adobe Landscape. Especially in the warmer color tones, you can see how this nicely increases the saturation there. Then let's open up the basic panel and play around with the white balance. I do want to have a little bit of blue color tones in here, so I'm not going to crazy with the temperature. In fact, I actually want to bring it down slightly. This will reduce the overall warmth a bit, of course, but don't worry, we will fix that later with some split toning. At this point, it's just to make sure we do have some blue tones left in the image. At the same time, I want to bring up the tint, which reduces the green color cast and just adds a little more of this magenta color tone, which fits really, really nicely on those sunrise images. For the next step, we want to work on the exposure. Looking at this program, you can see there is some overexposure going on. I could probably fix that by doing some kind of HDR thing because this area is just blown out. But I think it's not really a big deal. In fact, I think it looks pretty cool on this shot to have some very heavy glow on one side of the image. What I want to do is to bring up the exposure, making the whole shot a little brighter. And at the same time, to fix the brightest parts, I'm going to drop the highlights and thus just reveal some more details in those areas. Let's bring it down some more, but this is looking pretty good. All right, then I'm going to work on the contrast. For that, I'm bringing down the shadows very slightly. Then I'm adding some texture and I'm going to drop the clarity, which will help improve this already kind of dreamy look. So I'm only going to drop it very, very slightly. I'm also going to drop the dehaze just a bit, which helps improve this very dreamy look. Next, we want to make the colors pop. So let's increase the vibrance and the saturation. Perfect. So here we have the image after the base adjustments. You can see the colors have changed a little bit. The overall shot is colder due to the white balance, of course, but also the exposure looks a bit better with more details in the shadows and a little more details in the highlights. For the next step, let's improve that by using a bit of masking. First off, I do want to work on the sky, especially on those colder color tones up there on the left side. For that, I can nicely use a linear gradient and just drag it down like this. I don't want to target too much of the warm tones on the right, so that is looking pretty good. Here, I'm going to bring down the exposure just revealing some more details in the clouds up there. Can further adjust the linear gradient, bringing it further down a bit, just like that. Perfect. Then let's add another linear gradient over the foreground, just on those darker areas without affecting the bright top part. Here I am going to further drop the exposure again just giving this image some more darkness down here. At the same time, I'm going to bring up the temperature to fix that very, very strong blue color cast down here. That's looking pretty good. At this point, I do also want to add some glow on the right side. And for that reason, as usual, I'm going to use a radial gradient, a rather small one like this, and I'm going to rotate it a bit to fit the shape of the sunlight. And in here, I'm starting by increasing the blacks. Just like that. And I'm also going to drop the dehaze. This effect is super, super strong. So be careful. This will increase the overexposure once again. But as I said, I don't really care about the overexposed parts in this area. So I think the glow looks really good this way. All right, then let's add one more radial gradient just over the bigger part of this village because I do want to have some more brightness and details in here. So let's bring up the whites for brightness. 
And then let's play around with the texture. And let's also introduce some clarity. Perfect. And that is the image after the masking adjustments. You can see with just a bit of masking, we quite dramatically changed the image. Now it's time to improve the colors. So first off, let's head into the color mixer. Here I want to go into the hue panel first and I do have a feeling in the blue part of the sky there's some purple color cast going on. That's the reason for me to bring down the purple hue and just try to fix that color cast. That looks better. Then I'm also going to improve those warmer color tones in here by bringing down the yellow hue, making the sunrise colors a little more orange-ish. And let's also bring down the orange hue. I can deactivate the color mixer for a second so you can see the difference. I hope it's visible at least, but it's very, very subtle. For the saturation, I am just going to bring up the blue saturation a bit since I want to have those blue color tones in the image. Now, as always, the most fun part for me, the split toning. It's especially true for those sunset or sunrise images because here we can add really, really strong warm color tones by just going into the highlights and then let's pick a very, very warm hue somewhere in the yellow range and I'm going to pump up the saturation. And just like that, we have added some very, very epic sunrise light. Let's improve this by going into the midtones. Again, I'm picking a very warm color tone. I don't think I want to go too high on the saturation. Actually, let's just push it a tiny amount here. And now let's head into the shadows and just go with a cold color tone. I'm going to raise the saturation just a tiny bit again. Otherwise, it looks weird pretty fast. So that's a good spot right there. The final part of the color grading in the camera raw editor is happening in the calibration tab and as usual i'm going to bring down the blue primary hue which would just enhance those warmer tones some more and at the same time i'm going to bring up the saturation here that is looking really really good so again let's check the before and after view real quick you can see the colors look so much better after just those raw adjustments and the overall exposure is much much more pleasing to look at. So then it's time to finish this image in Photoshop. Let's open up this shot. What I want to do here is to apply some dodging and burning. For that reason I am going to use the TK panel plugin because this just allows me to quickly create luminosity masks. For example I want to burn the area up here in the darker areas. So I'm applying a new layer and I'm switching the blending mode to overlay for the dodging and burning stuff. Then with the TK panel plugin, I'm looking for a luminosity mask which fits the area which I want to burn. So this one is too dark, but I think that's looking like a good selection since I do have some areas up here affected. I'm going to activate layer mask mode and just add darks free to the overlay layer. Then I'm grabbing the brush and I'm dropping the brush opacity a bit. Set the foreground color to black. And I'm starting to just paint over those dark areas up here. Once I deactivate it, you can see the difference. We are just adding some contrast by burning these areas up here. All right, that's looking great so far. Next up, I'm going to add another overlay layer. This time I'm going to target the brighter areas that is looking like a good selection, so let's activate layer mask once more. Since I want to dodge things, I'm changing the foreground color from black to white to make areas brighter, of course. And then I'm carefully painting over the areas in the foreground, which deserve some more highlights. Maybe bring some more attention to the village as well. All right, that's looking great. For the next step, I do want to enhance the glow a bit more. So again, new layer, this time however, let's go with the soft light blending mode. And I'm going to set the foreground color to something with a slightly warm color cast, just like that in the yellow range. Also, I'm bringing down the opacity of the brush to 10%. 
now I'm just starting to add some glow over the sprite area on the right. Perfect, that should be enough. At this point I do want to make some final adjustments to the colors. I'm going to start this by going to the adjustment layers and here I'm simply using a photo filter. This adjustment layer, as you can see, will add a little bit of warmth over the whole image, which I think looks pretty good in this case. However, I can enhance those warm color tones some more, as well as the contrast by adding a curves adjustment layer. In this case, I'm going to activate this little hand icon here, with which I can now point to areas in the image, just like that, and bring it down to make those areas darker. And that is a really great way of adding some more contrast. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, but we didn't affect the colors yet. So in the drop down menu up here, I'm going into the red channel. And I'm just picking the point for the highlights and slightly drag it to the left. Just like that. Now, turning off the curves adjustment layer, you can see how we changed the image with contrast and some more red tones in the highlights. I do think I need to weaken this curves adjustment layer in the foreground. So again, I'm just grabbing the brush, set the foreground color to black, and let's adjust the brush opacity again. And now I'm just going to carefully paint over the foreground to just weaken it a bit. Perfect. Then one more thing I want to add, which is a Nick Collection filter. For that reason I'm going to merge all the layers we have created into one single layer and therefore I'm hitting Ctrl, Shift, Alt and E. So I'm not going to destroy the below layers, but I can use the newly merged layer to apply the Nick Collection effect. So let's head into that plugin. And all I need to do here is to use the Brilliance Warmth effect. As you can see here, I already applied it with a few adjusted settings. I basically pushed the saturation a bit and added some more warmth. Turning off the Brilliance and Warmth adjustment layer, you can see the difference. So that is looking pretty good. Let's apply it like that. All right, one more thing I want to do. I'm going to apply a layer mask. Again, set the foreground color to black. I'm going to bring up the brush opacity all the way up and I'm just masking out this warmth effect on the foreground because right now it's way too warm in the foreground. Okay, that is looking really good. And at this point, I think we are done editing this image. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.